Hey everyone, it's Ranger Russ back at the Meg's Point Nature Center. I'm having a lot of fun today. I'm really excited about today's favorite animal. It, it's going to be pretty exciting. So, I was a teaser, but before we get into the animal, we have to talk about those things that we talk about all the time. Remember, Connecticut State Parks are open. Please visit them. Nobody in the state of Connecticut is more than 15 minutes from a state park. If you get to your park and there are lots of people, go find another park because there's lots of cool parks out there. You could go to a forest, you could use the blue trails that are sponsored by the uh, CFPA, the Connecticut Forest and Park Association. They maintain all the blue trails. Lots of places to hike in Connecticut. And this is a great time to get out and get some fresh air, get some exercise, stay healthy, keep your social distance. 20 mice between you and anyone that you encounter on the trail. If you can maintain your social distance, please visit the parks. If they're too crowded or you're not able to maintain social distance, then you need to, to look elsewhere for your fresh air. But I really think fresh air is gonna be helpful for everybody. Remember to wash your hands really well. Try not to touch your face. Don't touch your face. Cover your face if you can't keep your uh, social distance and cough into your elbow. Completely cover it up when you, when you have to cough. Today's really special. We're doing things a little bit different this week because of the weather. So it looks like bad weather coming in tomorrow and then even worse on Friday. So I'm gonna do my park visit today. I get to go to another state park. I'm very excited because they've told me that over at this state park they have beavers in a pond. So I'm gonna go see if we can see some, we'll find the lodge, I doubt we'll see the beavers out because they like to be out at night, but we'll see what we can do at two o'clock this afternoon. Tune in, I'll be at another state park. Usually the state park visits last a little bit longer because I do a little walk or a hike, so really exciting. If you were able to last night, I was on a barred owl re-nesting. Really exciting, we got to find the, the other bar, barred owl that was still in the nest and we reunited the one that fell onto the ground with the one that was in the nest in a box and the mother was right there. Almost as soon as we were walking away, she flew right over near the tree. So it was really exciting. You can see those videos. They will be put into our archive with the other videos that I do at megspointnaturecenter.org virtual learning center. Really exciting stuff about barred owls. I'm gonna do a whole program on barred owls coming up. Uh, but it's really, really exciting. Okay. Someone says it looks like I'm teleporting. I probably have a bad connection because I am in the water room, which sometimes does get a uh, poor connection. So this is our animal of the day. Really cool. These are pufferfish, northern pufferfish. Little tiny puffers right there. Now, if you can't see them really well, let me know. I can put a paper behind it. Maybe they'll show up a little bit better. But these puffer fish are found in Long Island Sound. Can you believe that? Puffers in Long Island Sound. As a kid, I never believed that we would have had a cool fish like this in Long Island Sound. They are typically more warm water than the waters that we have in Long Island Sound, although the waters of Long Island Sound are warming quite a bit. So there are 120 species of puffers around the world. 30 of them live in fresh water. The rest of them are all salt water. These are, are salt water. They will sometimes get into brackish areas, not ours, but some of them will go into brack, brackish areas. Ours, the northern puffer, likes to be between 30 feet and 100 feet or even deeper sometimes. So they like to be in deep water, not necessarily up on the shore. Although occasionally we do catch the babies in our seine net and they're only about that big and they puff up when they get scared. So when they're scared, they puff up. The way that they puff up is not, they're not blowing up their stomach or inflating their lungs. They have a bladder that is near their stomach just a little sac that they inflate. If they're underwater, they fill it with water. 
So they get pretty solid and, and heavier. If they're at the surface, they inflate with air. So they can do either or. And they can deflate when they're not scared anymore. So that's a great defense because they get very large and the adults have little spines all over them. So it's hard for a predator to try and eat them. Lots of big fish like to try and eat them, but they have a hard time. So what do these guys like to eat? They prefer to eat crustaceans, mollusks, small animals with shells for the small ones. They will get, these guys get over a foot long, so they can eat larger clams, uh, crustaceans, crabs. They will actually eat blue crabs. This is brand new to me. I just found this out. They will eat, and I think this came from the Chesapeake Bay study. They did a study on these. What they do is they swim down to the bottom where the bluefish are, and they squirt water. They propel water under the bluefish and lift the bluefish up, and then they shoot in underneath, and they have really hard, sharp teeth, crushing teeth, and they reach in there, and then they grab the belly of the bluefish. They attack the belly of the bluefish and try and break, the, break through the shell. So that's really amazing. It's absolutely spectacular that these fish will flip a crab over and be able to eat them. So that is really, really exciting. Now, our fish, these are not full babies. You know, the babies are, are an inch or less. And what happens when the mother is ready to lay her eggs, she's gonna go down uh, May to August to a substrate, muddy bottom, and she sticks the eggs to the bottom. Then she leaves, she's done. The father comes along and he circles around them and guards them until they hatch. So the dad is the one that he just guards them, makes sure nobody eats his eggs. And then when they hatch, they swim off. Then they're on their own as well. So again, the small ones, they're eating much smaller crustaceans and shellfish than the larger ones. All right, is everybody able to see this here? I'm going to put a paper behind here and see if that makes them show up a little bit better. All right, and we're actually, I'm gonna move the camera so you guys can get a closer look. All right, so this is what happens on live, Facebook Live, is you can see these fish. Now, some puffers are poisonous. Actually, the second most poisonous vertebrate in the world is a puffer fish. Second most, second to the golden poison tree frog, poison frog, poison dart frog. Uh, the golden one is the most poisonous vertebrate. So that means something with a vertebrae or a backbone. That's a really good vocabulary word. So this is a good time for me to remind you that if you visit our website, megspointnaturecenter.org virtual learning center, we have vocabulary words on there, lists of vocabulary words, and there are activities uh, for you to do. So you can learn about these amazing animals that, that we're doing these programs on. All right, I'm gonna put this back and we're gonna take a look and see if we have any questions that I can answer for you guys. All right. Someone says they never saw a puffer before. Again, we do get them in Long Island Sound, uh, which is pretty cool. Never knew till last year we had them in the sound. All right, I'm not seeing a whole lot of questions. I wanna thank you guys. Keep on putting up where you're uh, messaging from. There's from Madison, you're local. You could come right in as soon as we open the Nature Center anyway you'll be able to come down. I have to do a birthday shout out to my sister. It's her birthday today and I think that her kids are probably watching. 
So, happy birthday, Rachel. All right, anybody have any questions on the pufferfish? So again, this afternoon, I will be visiting Osborndale State Park, and I will be hopefully finding a beaver pond. Someone is asking, can the puffer fish puff? They can, but they only puff if they're scared. I really don't want them to puff. That means that I have stressed them out in some way. So when I caught them and put them in here, we moved them very quickly. They are used to being caught because occasionally we have to move them around. Uh, but as long as we don't scare them, they won't puff up. And it's not really harmful to them to puff up. It just means that they've been scared. And I don't like to scare any animals. It's much better if the animal is, is happy and content. Are they in the sound because it's cleaner than in the past? That's a good question. The cleanliness of the water, I'm sure, has something to do with it, but also probably the warmth of the water. It is getting warmer. But they have been in the sound for a very long time. I don't know historically going back how long, but going back into the 80s, and I did look it up, they were here when I was a kid. I just didn't know they were here when I was a kid. So they've been here a while, um, and I think that we're seeing more of them now than we have in the past. And that probably, the cleanliness of the water definitely makes a difference, and also the uh, fact that it's a little bit warmer, because most puffers like warm water. The northern puffer doesn't have to have warm water. This puffer is found from Canada all the way to Florida, so it can handle pretty cold temperatures. All right, I'm not seeing any more questions, so let me just remind everybody, if you like us or follow us on Facebook or do both, that will let your friends know that you're enjoying these programs and maybe they'll join in. I'm having a blast doing these programs. This is a lot of fun. And, you know, we're getting 30 or 40 people watching live every time and it's getting shared a lot. So I'm going to keep doing this. I hope that everybody else is having fun because I couldn't think of anything more fun other than doing this program for you if you were in person. I would much rather be doing this program for live animals, but this is pretty good too. So again, visit our virtual learning center on our website, megspointnaturecenter.org. Like us, we're Meg's Point Nature Center on Facebook. We have a Meg's Point Nature Center YouTube channel. All these videos are up there, and we'll be putting some new videos that are just for YouTube. Uh, and our virtual learning center, we're adding new things all the time. We have vocabulary words that go along with it. So you'll hear vertebrate on there, um, or see vertebrate on there. And then we've got activities that you can do, scavenger hunts, word searches, word scrambles, things like that that you can do at home. And I definitely suggest go out and enjoy Connecticut State Parks. They are everywhere. I'm going to get to visit one this afternoon, so I'm really excited. Hopefully, we will see a live beaver. They do come out in the day sometimes, so there's a chance that we could see a live beaver uh, when I get over to Osmondale. So really excited about doing this. All right, if we don't have any more questions, I'm just gonna say I will see you guys this afternoon at two o'clock from Osborndale State Park. Make sure you tune in. And another note, I almost forgot. Because we're doing the traveling program today where I'm going to the park, we're gonna be doing another book by John Himmelman on Friday. So we're going to do box turtles in the morning on Friday, a very exciting subject, box turtles. And then he's going to read his box turtle book at 2 o'clock. So 11 o'clock, live box turtles, 2 o'clock, John Himmelman reading his book about box turtles. So we're going to call Friday's box turtle day. Also, if you would like to sign up for our, uh, what do they call them, Zoom meetings. We're having Zoom conferences coming up. Go to megspointnaturecenter.org website, the calendar. We're going to be putting up, there's one up there now. There's going to be another one I'm trying to get for next Saturday. 
So we will have science speakers, animal speakers, different people talking about the things that they know a lot more about than I do. So we're, we're reaching out to the experts all around us and getting more contributors to the content that we are providing you. So hopefully everyone is having a great time and I will see you all at two o'clock from Osborndale State Park.